All right, what's up, everybody? Hope you guys are having a blessed Saturday. It's an absolute pleasure and a beautiful one out here. But I wanted to make a quick video why XRP and XLM are unique. These two coins are liquidity tokens. This separates them from the whole rest of the space besides stable coins, which I will talk about stable coins later. What we see now, $156 trillion is settled in cross-border payments every year. That's what Ripple just reported. The, the ex, uh, estimations are, are going to be for cross-border payments this year, $156 trillion. So you can do the calculations, and what makes this unique is a set or agreed upon price has to be done if you want to provide liquidity for a given network, a given corridor. You have to understand how much value you have to settle every day. It is a simple equation. People want to play and speculate and run through the numbers a hundred different ways till the sun comes up tomorrow, and that's fine. We can all speculate on that. But let's break down that equation. Let's, for example, use SWIFT, which settles five to six trillion dollars per day. Okay, that's great. We understand what the end goal is. We need to move and settle, not just messaging, which SWIFT does 44 million messages per day, if you want to add that into your calculation as well. SWIFT settles five to six trillion dollars daily in value. Okay, so we have the end goal in mind. Now we go back and we determine how much of a token do we have to provide liquidity. You know, with U.S. dollars, this is the whole problem, is there's an unlimited supply. And they just printed, a, you know, over a third of the whole circulating supply of the U.S. dollar just got circulated and injected over the last two years, created out of thin air. With cryptocurrencies, uh, they can't print them out of thin air. Stable coins, that's a different story. We'll talk about that here shortly. But for the purpose here of providing liquidity for a network, we have a five to six trillion dollars daily volume needed. Okay. We go back, let's say we have 1 billion tokens to settle up in this network, in this corridor, wherever we're providing liquidity. This instance, SWIFT, 5 to $6 trillion daily, and we have 1 billion tokens to settle that. We can come up with a price. Now, we might want to factor in how fast are the tokens going to burn, how quickly are the transactions done, how quickly can you use the same XRP or XLM over and over again on a daily basis. Okay, we can calculate all that out. As I said, in the instance of SWIFT, 44 million messages per day. So, you know, you have a lot of transactions and settling it going up every single day over there. And that's just a smaller network. You have ACI Worldwide, which does $14 trillion daily. Think about that. Two networks, $20 trillion daily settled. Completely different than the market cap calculation. But this is what makes XRP and XLM unique to the whole rest of the space is because these two tokens cannot be printed out of thin air. Now, Jed McCaleb decided to burn some, uh, you know, f half the supply of XLM was burned by the Stellar Development Foundation. Interesting. But we have 50 billion XRP in circulation right now. Okay, we can start from there. And then we can know that, you know, 30 billion XRP is being held by retailers. Uh, only 10 to 20 billion is going to be able to use for on-demand liquidity or for institutions. Okay, you can play with these numbers till the sun comes up tomorrow. But the point is, guys, there's no other cryptos in the space where this is the utility. This situation where a set or agreed upon price is needed. No, th there's no need for that with HBAR, with Algorand, because it's not liquidity. It's the price will rise based off of the different utilities, by the different NFTs, by the smart contracts, by the CBDCs. That will all bring and add to the value of the network. But you know, and, and let's say this, okay, maybe HBAR Algorand is going to get one of these networks. That's fine if that is the case. I just don't see anybody else in the space going after primarily providing liquidity. Now, obviously, Ripple and XLM, Stellar, are two different companies, two different paths, two different use cases. Stellar going for retail, underbanked, unbanked, and that's great relatively smaller dollar amount, value amount of those networks that they're looking to settle, that the problems that they're looking to solve, relatively speaking, excuse me, are smaller. With Ripple, they're targeting wholesale payments, $30 trillion in Nostro Vostro accounts, $156 trillion in cross-border payments. Now, we can get really conservative if we want to play that, if, if we want to do it that way. Let's be really conservative. $156 trillion settled per year across border payments. Let's only get 1% of that on XRP or XLM. Okay? You can just make that conservative assumption and then go back and figure out what the price of XRP is going to be needed at based off of how much XRP supply 
will be available for those cross-border payments. My XRP is not available for cross-border payments. Neither is yours. When you know we end up selling or doing something with our XRP, it'll be circulating again. But this is where we get into doing the calculations. People are just playing with the numbers all day long, right? And that's not what we're here to do. What we're here to talk about is why these two are unique. Why these problems are the biggest and why, in my opinion, that makes them the best opportunity when looking at all of these assets. I understand Algorand, HBAR, Quant, some of these other utility co uh, tokens. That's fantastic. But I don't see that. I, I mean, maybe I, I, I'll be pleasantly surprised. That'd be fine if Quant gets 5% of SWIFT. That's fine. That's the conversation that I've been trying to get at, though, here is who is going to solve these problems? These problems are valued in the trillions of dollars every day. If it's not going to be XRP, maybe it'll be XLM. But who else is even at the table having that conversation? Last week, both uh, Ripple and Stellar announced uh, partners in Africa. And like I said, 350 million people under uh, no access to bank accounts. 350 million all those people being brought online through mobile phones devices and we, we bring them on we got elon beaming down the starlink everywhere that's great to see so we bring everyone online we give everyone access and this only grows the amount of value that's circulating every day as well so you think about that 156 tr uh, trillion in cross-border payments now that's just where we're at now think of how many millions hundreds of millions and probably still a billion people or more that are still offline don't even have internet so, so you see how big this is going to get. That's awesome. But then let's just go look at the problems that need to be solved right now. They're massive. And I like this uh, example here. If Ripple XRP is only going to settle 1% of that $156 trillion in cross-border payments, that means that their network, that, that network or that portion of XRP for settlement is going to be worth $1.56 trillion if we get 1% of that cross-border payment. Okay. That's basically what the market cap of Bitcoin went to uh, last bull run. And, and to me, it's just funny because people think that that was such a great accomplishment. The, the market cap of Bitcoin going over a trillion, reaching 1.5 trillion. Folks, if you had all 50 billion XRP in circulation to settle that 1.56 trillion, let's just round off 1.5 trillion, you would have a $30 XRP. If you were able to use all 50 billion in circulation okay you don't have that though <laughs> and there's a whole lot of other people that are building on the xrp ledger as well so you just start to add this up and you know for me you, you i like to say even if we're half wrong about how far we can go how many partnerships we'll get it's still life-changing i mean gosh look at that one percent of cross-border payments and we go to a 10 20 30 dollar price just to get started and you know like i said everyone's going to be playing with the numbers when's iso going to go live i just listened to brad i just listened to team i yeah i wish i could listen to jed mccaleb and stellar more but you know they send their representatives uh to, th to the entities to the groups every so once in a while maybe go speak in front of congress uh that's great danelle dixon speaking in front of congress a couple times now that's that's great from stellar but they're kind of off in the shadows being kind of secretive but this is what i love about ripple xrp is i can just go look at their quarterly reports and this is where this gets exciting people ask why is xrp price not moving all these partnerships all this adoption all these new corridors record on demand liquidity growth why is the price not moving they're just getting started brad just told us at the swell conference that they've only settled 30 billion dollars on on-demand liquidity so far now think about that only 30 billion so far over the course of a few years that on-demand liquidity has been going on now just think about when we get to the point of settling 30 billion dollars per day how, how much what, what's going to happen to that xrp price just going to 30 billion per day which is nothing we just went through the numbers i, I mean if we get one percent of the cross-border payments on a yearly basis, we have to settle and move $1.56 trillion, even just on a yearly basis, versus $30 billion so far over, you know, I think 2019 is when they got on-demand liquidity rolling, or 2018. I don't even know when they're taking that, the start of RippleNet or the start of on-demand liquidity. I think, 
if uh, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that he's talking about on-demand liquidity so far has settled thirty billion dollars, and it was twenty million transactions. So, literally over uh, years, you know, three four years, we've settled half the amount of transactions that happen on Swift on a daily basis. Forty four million Swift transaction daily messages. And as far as dollar amounts, we've only moved 30 billion total over the course of three, four years versus moving $30 billion per day, moving a trillion dollars per day, settling $20 trillion between Swift and ACI worldwide. I want to mention stable coins before I end this. I don't trust any of these stable coins. I don't trust any of these exchanges right now. I want to be able to see reserves and we're starting to see everyone get exposed the liquidity crisis contagion spreading rapidly it's bad i'm not trading i don't own tether i have no stable coins and i only have on exchanges what i'm looking to sell god willing if we ever get a, a pump i don't trust anybody and tether's the final biggest domino to fall once this is all said and done the problem is is that they've been printing tether out of thin air they've been printing their own exchange tokens out of thin air it has propped up the whole space right and so this is why stable coins yes they are liquidity providers they're going after the same use case that i'm saying makes xrp and xlm unique being liquidity tokens but there's not a limited supply we don't know the reserves and what is it backed by these stable coins are backed by us dollar assets debt the pyramid scheme that we're trying to get away from XRP XLM is backed by the value and utility of the network. The underlying assets that are on that ledger, which, like I said, you just get little chunks here and there. We're at life changing prices for many of us XRP holders. We will get the final laugh. You know, they've been mocking us. They've been doing their thing, but that's fine. We know what we hold. We know where we're going. And God, it's so simple. If these guys would just go listen to Brad Garlinghouse, listen, lead the quarterly market reports from Ripple, they're telling you what they're doing. They're telling you how far they've come along. But then when we look at the whole rest of the space, the whole rest of the payments infrastructure, they're just getting started, just starting to make the ripples. The liquidity that is coming onto these ledgers, I think, is just going to be massive. And I cannot wait for just finally being on this level playing field and getting to see this liquidity utility ramp up here in America because with the new on-demand liquidity partnerships in uh, in Africa, right? It's opening up another corridor. We have Euro- uh, European regions as well. We just got France and Sweden on-demand liquidity partners as well. This gives us clarity. As soon as we have clarity in one region, right? That means we can get all the countries, all of the financial institutions and banks within those areas. So it's just a matter of onboarding them. And we know that Ripple is doing such a fantastic job of that. So with that being said, folks, this is what makes XRP and XLM so unique. And this is why they are my two biggest holdings in the cryptocurrency space. That's not financial advice, but uh, it, it just in a need to be completely transparent with you guys. And I've been straight up. XRP and XLM is is my two biggest holdings by far. And I'm going to continue to uh, watch what these two companies are doing. But they're definitely not looking to just capture 1% of cross-border payments. They said specifically, we're here to put a debt in the universe. That's what I love getting behind. I appreciate all of you guys. If you guys like this little short deep dive in the truck, uh, smash that thumbs up for me. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. And uh, we're going to keep it coming for you guys. God bless you all. Thank you.